Hey everybody, Sandy here, AK Montoya, and we are back for round five of a vintage league with Mono Green Bazaar featuring Hex Drinker, Canister's creation from the Vintage Challenge yesterday. We run the die roll. Um, powder that one. I think I'll put the uh, green one in there. Much better. We'll keep this one. Question is, what are we up against? We got one discard equity here. Let's see what we can do. Oh, wouldn't you know it, folks? Wowzers. Better lucky than good. That gives us a chance with pretty rough mold of five there. <clears throat> Let's see what we're up against here. Did lose two vines and a hogak. Those are the most notable. Okay. Bug. Basic forest. Yikes. Did not expect that. So you want to know something cool is Hex Drinker, Bug cannot beat it if it gets up to protection from instance. I wonder if I can find a Gaia's Cradle here. We didn't. I don't really think we need the extra bazaar, but maybe we, we do want it. I think I do. See if we can resolve our hex drinker. It's innocuous enough, but it gets big fast. Like I, I played this against a bug opponent earlier today. I was trying out the deck for the first time, and the first time that it landed, my opponent just didn't even acknowledge the card. And once it uh, got up to ultimate, uh, of course, I killed them. There was nothing that they could do about it. And it was funny to see them in the, the next game when I cast a Hex Drinker twice. It was like an absolute frenzy of them trying to stop it. Uh, it, it was pretty funny. But this is, I, I suspect, the type of deck that Hex Drinker really shines against. Like, you, you do need to remove it. Like, my focus now has shifted from um, the Bizarre Strategy to try and make my Hex Drinker big enough to beat what they're doing. So we'll see. Now, we're not, we're not in a good position here. Like, my opponent's got four lands, or, excuse me, four cards in their hand, and, you know, they may just kill the Hex Drinker right here, right now, and then we're just in a lot of trouble. We're, we're kind of in on this Hex Drinker. But if they leave me alone here... I will be able to pump this up to three, depending on what they do with their mana here. As I say, the card is innocuous, like you don't realize yeah, how good it is. So they still have mana up here. Actually, yeah, they do have mana up to kill my Hex Drinker. Hmm. 
Notice it turns off bizarre. And I don't even know that we want to be bizarre in here anyways. Okay. Okay, so we have a green light here to get this thing pumped up. I also could be attacking with the root wall, but I, I, that's not my focus right now. <coughs> this thing is a 4-4. Four, four. Can I attack both at Narset? Try that. They can chump keep Narset around. Okay. This is now out of, take note, out of instant range. So, yes, they can actually Oko it. Right now, Tarmogoyf is not going to do it. So we just have to pray they don't have Oko here. We, we will lose to an Oko, but this turn left unaccosted, we're going to try and get this thing. Well, we can't quite make it up to a... I'm going to do it now, guys. The reason being is I really, um, like I could have cast the Serum Powder there and done it for two and still been able to do it the following turn. But if my, my Cradle gets killed, I won't have the luxury of doing that. So we're just going to sit back this turn. Like, I, I don't want to, yes, I could trade with one of the Tarmogoyfs for my, my Vegeline, but it's going to feed their death right to do that, so I'm not going to do it. Yep. Death right, yep. That was a lot of death rights, guys. I don't think they really want to shrink their guy too much. Yep, that's a good one. It's going to pump their goifs up significantly. But they lose two life and they die to my hex drinker. Which is not great for them. Hex drinker, folks. Canister was on to something. I, I do love this card. Is it actually good in this deck? I'm not sure. But when you have a Gaius Cradle going, it can sure change the uh, complexity of the game very quickly. So my opponent can gain some life here. They can go up to seven. I'm going to go down to... So they can actually survive. My Hex Drinker. So I shouldn't be getting all jolly here at the moment. Oh, I just took it by accident. Oops. Now I die. <laughs> that was, uh, I was just bragging and not paying any attention. That's pretty funny. I mean, it's not funny, but it's funny.
I was pretty sure we had this one locked up. But uh, I went to go to block there, and I, I guess I went through my blocks. Down to four, and they can put me down to two. My guy gets through for the win. Okay. Thought I I thought I screwed that up. Whoops. All right. Well, that felt pretty good. I think we want the basic for Assassin's Trophy. I could see death right being reasonable here. I also could see endurance being somewhat reasonable. Collector roof is quite poor in the match. See Blazing Root Wall not being great either. Get rid of one Hogak perhaps. Hogak is pretty tough though on Bug. Like I guess we just probably don't need all of these. Force of Vigor is pretty bad. So much so I don't even really want it. Guess I'll try this. You know what? I think I'm just gonna be able to cast my spells. Like Pithing Needle would suck if they had it, but I'm not gonna play around Pithing Needle. Watch me instantly be punished for that. Like what does Bug have? Like a Graph Digger's Cage, uh Ley Line of the Void. Like, Pithing Needle would be the worst of the bunch, but I, I don't think Bug is typically running more than one Pithing Needle, if at all. So, I mean, come on. We've got a mental misstep. But this deck does function without its Bizarre. And, I mean, you just saw what happens with a Hex Drinker all on its own, right? Like, watch what happens now. My opponent is going to be very upset when they see Hex Drinkers being cast because they need to be answered and... Normally, they're worrying about these guys. You know, Hogak. They can't necessarily worry about these things now. They've got to worry about Hex Drinkers because it's impossible for them to, to do anything about it once it's ultimate. Like, plus eight. Yeah, this hand's, like, pretty mediocre. I don't want to keep this. Like, it's just so reliant on this. We, we can do better. Yeah. Okay. This hand would be really bad if they did have a Ley Line of the Void against me because uh, I've got Benjamin and Mandrels was the route I went. But we'll see. We're going to run into a death right right away. Let us see. Let's see if we can get our buying going right now. That'd be a pretty big game if we could. Okay, well. No, that's not what they're looking for. We're going to discard that. We're going to discard that. And do like Hex Drinker. I also like the Cradle as well. Like, can I get rid of that friggin' Bazaar? Yeah. What else they got here? Oh, that's too bad. It didn't hit anything. I'll take a Hex Drinker here. Now they're penciled into eating my Vengevine. It's a little unfortunate, but maybe we can get a Mandrels in next turn.
like our bazaar yeah i guess we don't really want to lose it unnecessarily but like you look at the way our hand is sculpted now like we are really trying to get our hex drinkers going mm. just past turn oh interesting No, they're casting some. Now it does fuel my mandrels. Blue, what are they doing here? Time walk. It's not bad. Interesting. I guess they're really looking for a land here, wasteland. Well, here's the thing about Void Mirror. Yes, that sure looks good against some of what I'm doing, but not this. So this will counter my Root Wall up, but I think that is okay. It's unfortunate because I was just slamming the root, the Void Mirror saying it's not good. It would have been good here with my Cradle. That's where it would have been good. But I'm going to spin anyways, and we're going to see if we can fuel our yard a little bit when we have an opportunity to do so. So that's really good. And what else do we want to get rid of here? Can I get rid of the Seiju? Seiju does help pump up the uh, guys, but I think that's okay. Void Mirror gets it. And I think I have to protect my Cradle here. I think I'm just going to cast a Hex Drinker here. Actually, the Cradle might have been better uh, because the other Cradle, Gaia's Cradle, because of the presence of... Uh, Tabernacle. I mean, there's a pretty big hit coming through. But now, now look at my Gaia's Cradle next turn, guys, on this Hex Drinker. Like, pretty strong, right? Like, getting up to six just there. And Force of Will is turned off with Void Mirror. Void Mirror is a card I've played a little bit with, and it's a very good card, uh, and I think it's arguably underplayed to some extent, but it's a card that you must have in your opener um, against traditional um, Root Walla Bazaar decks that were, you know, reliant on free spells like... Uh, the Void Mirror coming down turn one can just win. Like against Hollow Line, if the Void Mirror comes down turn one and you can't do anything about it before you've done any played anything, you lose. It's over. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. It can be very good against traditional workshops. See, so look at my opponent after my Hex Drinker. Insane, guys. Fuel in my graveyard. I mean, I'm not saying it's wrong. Just it's kind of crazy, right? I really like what I have in my hand here. Like, my opponent is at 10. I cannot kill them because I don't have a red mana to pump this. But I put them to 1. They can't force a will me. Hex Drinker, guys. 
hex drinker what can i say very very good there it was actually in my league preceding this one i did not record that one unfortunately i wanted to take the deck for a spin first um it was very good for me as well and i put up a 4-1 with that deck as well um uh, my only loss was i believe to no props on uh, a bizarre mirror where they were not playing the hack stringer version but um yeah it was a very good match unfortunately i didn't get that one for you this deck is pretty good guys um i went on record saying last week when i played the no props version of the list with the main deck collectors that i did not likely feel it was as good as traditional hogak vine that has the red man at like the jun version um but there's definitely pros and cons. This is the second time. Canisters version of this deck is born from a no props list with the Yavamaya cradles. And of course, they've added in gay as cradles. And uh, yeah, I, I like the list. I highly recommend it. I'm not sure how I feel about this one versus John Hogak Vine. Like, you know, I guess one of the true privileges of this particular deck is that you can hard cast your spells. You don't need Bazaar at all, and it's far better than Jun Hogak Vine at doing that without the Bazaar. And that is a pro when you get to have main deck collector roofs. And uh, I, I'm not going to lie to you, the Hex Drinker has been damn good. It just outright needs to be answered in certain situations, or there's an inevitability there. And we got tons of blockers and stuff. Um, really enjoyed the deck, guys. I, I, I definitely highly recommend playing it. Uh, it's going to take me a few more leagues of fooling around to see what I think of it. Um, didn't get an opportunity to show I do think Booting Mandrels is a very viable card in this deck as well. But uh, nonetheless, I digress. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the videos. And please hit the like and subscribe button. And feel free to leave any comments. And we're going to see you guys next time.